All right, welcome back. Thanks for uh, tuning in. Today we're going to be talking about Department H. Uh, I'm going to go over the first omnibus, which is half the first half of the book. Um, I'll try not to do too many spoilers, and uh, let's dive right in. Okay, here we go. This is uh, Department H Omnibus Volume 1, uh, the first half of the series. Um, this is the cover. I'll just talk about the cover. I uh, had a bunch of different variations on this cover and eventually settled on this one. And, and uh, I like the idea of teasing that there's something behind her on, on this cover and then the big octopus on the back. Um, that was some. That was an idea that we uh, had early on, and I guess I should start with this being the first. Uh, I think the first, or at least the first on this scale collaboration with uh, my wife Charlene, where uh, I did all of the drawing, and then she painted everything. All right, so let's see. Here we go. Um, there's our cast of characters. Uh, to prepare for this book, I read a bunch of Agatha Christie. I hadn't, my, uh, hadn't read too much of it, and, I, and the idea of doing a locked room murder mystery was something that um, I wanted to do, but having not read a lot of it, I had to sort of get caught up on it. And I remember my mom, when I was younger, she read all the Agatha Christie's. She was a huge fan of uh, the books. And so I read a few of those, asked her what her favorites were, and, and sort of read some of those. And I think uh, one of them was the, I think it's the murder of Roger Ack, Ackroyd was one of them. And then I'm trying to remember what the other ones were, but I read uh, a handful of them just to sort of get a handle on the genre. I wanted to make sure this is something that worked as a locked room murder mystery, uh, even though my intent really was to um, I just wanted to do like an underwater story and, uh, that was a good hook, a good way to get into it. Um, all right, here we go. We introduce a character, um, Mia and my, the idea here was that we see her, uh, above water for a page and a half and then she never comes back up. The whole series is going to be underwater. So I really wanted to make sure that, um, the entire series was underwater except the flashbacks were the only cheat um, when it came to that. But again, it, I set that up as one of my obstacles, storytelling obstacle, where I wanted to make sure we stayed underwater and kept that pressure going on her, like literally and figuratively. Um, and so we just never come up for air. And she's down there the uh, entire series. Um, kind of a fun writing challenge. And then my work around with that was to do sort of slip in some flashbacks and memories and things like that. Um, so we'll get some of those there to set it up as she heads down to the base. And we in introduce our first suspect, our first uh, murderer suspect. Um, as he escorts her down to the base. And then some more flashbacks. Um, indicated with the blue tones. Uh, originally, I think Charlene painted these black and white, and then I added do a tone in Photoshop afterwards. Um, and then one of my favorite things is sort of this in between. We're seeing their relationship um, broken here, and then in between we see sort of like a subliminal um, what it used to be or what they used to share, sort of hinting at that. Um, again, this is something that I think is great. I, I'm always trying to do is trying to figure out how we use comic books to do something you can't really do any other way. And, and sort of slipping that kind of thing in there is, uh, is something I think comics is really great at. All right, then we head down to the base. I did a lot of design work trying to figure this stuff out. It's it's uh, one of the few projects where I had to, I did a lot of uh, character design, a lot of like set design the suits that they wear, the submarines that they use. Uh, there's a lot of work involved with um, um, that, like kind of pre-production really on figuring out all the stuff. Um, so I haven't done that a lot. So I came up with this crazy diving suit um, and had a lot of fun with it. And working early on with Charlene, working with her, I, I uh, used to just working a certain way and drawing for myself and I realized with the way she paints and 
how she uses color and water uh, with the watercolor. Um, I wanted to give her something to, you know, more room to work. So I left a lot of open space uh, intentionally for her um, that I didn't used to do. I would just usually fill it with detail or fill things in black. Um, but with her uh, doing the paint, it was it was definitely something I, as we went along, I got better at. It's sort of like leaving space for her to work. Um, and then there was a learning process for us as we went along. Um, then we're introducing all the clues, and there are clues to the, the mystery, to solve the mystery in this first, in this first issue. Everything there, everything is there. Um, so if you get to the end of it, I won't spoil it, but if you get to the end of it, all the clues, everything you need is right there. I want to make sure that I set all that up, introduce all the suspects um, in that first issue, and then give you all the visual clues you need to at least maybe kind of figure it out. Um, and then here we go, issue two. So uh, the original issues had a lot of inside stuff. I, on the inside covers, I would do a little art, a little a supplemental art with different things to sort of do some world building. Um, here's an homage to uh, 2001 Space Odyssey. So we pull out the window uh, of this um, satellite and show that uh, from outside. Had fun doing that. Uh, a friend of mine owns that art. He's a huge Kubrick fan. And uh, here we go. And then sort of introduce the characters and get some more interaction. A lot of underwater. I really, this is what I was excited about. I did, I wanted to do this series because I really wanted to do a lot of underwater with diving suits and submarines and, and underwater aquatic creatures and things like that. Um, I just felt like it would be really fun to draw. So um, this is great. Again, this is, this is early on too. I think later in the series, I would never fill this in black. I would let Charlene um, use that space. But uh, nice. Still like it. I, I feel like using the black, big areas of black, made it more claustrophobic. And it's, it's kind of what we were going for is either outer space or the claustrophobic underwater stuff. Again, more just great paint by Charlene. Um, that's more supplemental stuff. This is like sketches of me designing the base, um, designing a lot of the characters. Um, Raj, all, almost. I'm pretty sure every character in here, except for uh, Q, uh, are based on real people in my life, friends, people I know. Um, and here we go, the ghost diver issue. So we get some flashback of her childhood, and then she wakes up. Um, almost died, she almost fell off this cliff down to the very, very bottom of the ocean, which she wouldn't have been able to make it back. So that's exciting. And then, uh, and you'll notice on the side, I'll talk about this now, I guess, but on the side, I had this little running meter. Uh, and this is an idea I had. I knew it was gonna be 24 issues. So there's 24 squares on the side. Um, and every issue, it fills up a little bit. Because the concept being that there's a murder mystery and she has to figure out uh, who did it before the base completely floods. And so what's cool is if you look at the side, the edge of the pages, you can see it slowly fill up. And when you have book two there, it fills up to the top. Um, this is a, not a essential, but another fun idea I had. I, I like to think of the book as a 3D object. Um, I, one of my earliest jobs, uh, was a, I was a graphic designer doing package design. It made, really made me think of, of everything I do in dimension and all, all the sides of it, front, top, back. Um, the underside, the edges, everything. Every part of the book is usable space to help tell the story. So here we go, it starts to flood. And then we're sort of isolating me with these different characters. And then we introduce, I wanted to do something a little surreal. So it's, this is kind of a hallucination, maybe. If she's sleep deprived and tired, more character design. Um, yeah, and again, these covers, this is an idea Charlene had had to use, do wraparound covers. So we would do, um, 
the issue would be the, the logo is here and then the issue would wrap around. So the front, this is the front, and then you flip it over and it would be the back. Um, as we go through, um, my idea for these was that the front would be like a cover, work as a cover, but then the back would sort of be a punchline or sort of tell the story. So this is the setup and then you turn it over and then you would um, get the punchline for, for that uh, issue. Um, so again, this one, imagine the cover being this, or she's in a submarine, you just get a hint of this leg, and then you flip it over, and then you see what, what uh, you sort of get the punchline of that cover. And I, we did that with every one. Let me see if I, this one, I think I hid some, a message in her hair. Something's hidden in her hair. I won't spoil everything. Um, and then this one. So there's a parrot in the back. This was a fun one. When I'm signing the issues, I usually write something in there for the parrot to say. Uh, let's see. But um, let's flip back. So that's a. Uh, here we go. And then a uh, giant turtle. So she's under the water. And then when they go deeper, they start finding some strange, stranger under underwater stuff. Um, this turtle, inspired by uh, Marie, who was, shares our studio, and uh, I don't know if she, I don't know what she said. She said something about how there should be a turtle in there. Um, I think the turtle's name is Chunk. I don't know that we ever name it in the comic, <laughs> but the, that was something funny she said to me, and I was like, all right, we're putting it in the book. So there's a big turtle, but it ended up being one of my favorite images. Um, there's a cover we did with the turtle. I don't know if it was this cover. Yeah, this is my favorite cover. Um, so I just love Charlene's color on this, how bright it is, and then the scale of it. Um, it's one of my favorite things. More character sketches. Um, and again, all these characters are based on, this is based on a friend of mine. A lot of the dialogue, a lot of the things in here, a lot of it is discussion or argument about um, faith and religion and science and um, uh, space exploration versus uh, sea, ocean exploration, you know, and why do one over the other. And so a lot of that was um, discussions or things, debates that I have with myself, with my friends. Um, and sea mime, this is completely made up based on a sea spider, but I like the idea that they maybe had vocal cords and so that they can sort of mimic what they hear and it makes for a creepy scene as I go through this underwater cave. Um, and another thing, these diving suits have all these helmet, all these cameras. The idea being that there's no light under that deep. So you have these cameras and in infrared and all these ways to sort of pick up um, video uh, when where there's no light. And, uh, so we sort of get the point of view of this, this uh, helmet camera which is kind of fun to draw some more flashbacks. And then some explosions, things are going bad. Um, another character design, Bob, named after um, my daughter's gecko, pet gecko. She named Bob. And again, this is another cover where you see just the corroded Department H logo on the back. The punchline is there's like a little hand body floating in the water. Um, and I love doing cutaway views. I wanted to show how, sort of how these suits worked and they have these sort of emergency bubbles where the mask come out so they can swim. They can wear these suits and then still breathe underwater. They're not good at depth, a lot of uh, depth, but for emergencies. And there we go. And then we meet more flashbacks sort of learning the story, getting Mia's memories and how those tie into the mystery, these moments with her dad um, and the origins of Department H as she's trying to put out fires in the present day. Um, again, more character drawings. I really like doing these. I think I, some of these I did on the iPad or on the um, my Cintiq. I was sort of playing around with brushes and sort of uh, learning the program. So I did those as sort of tests. This is straight from a sketchbook. This is the earliest ideas I had for, 
or how flippers could work where they just flip out, um, turn into flippers and then they would flip back in. That's some funny designs. Um, the inspiration for this book, some of it was Agatha Christie, some of it was Jacques Cousteau, of course. Um, there's a documentary, uh, World Without Sun, which I watched. It was just uh, really uh, impacted me. It was very claustrophobic, very like lo-fi, um, kind of scary in a way. I'm scared of uh, drowning. And so this is sort of my way of uh, tapping into that. And I think my original idea was I was going to go learn to dive and, as research, and I ended up chickening out, I think. Um, this is a great issue. It's uh, her and Roger stuck in a room, talking, sharing their story, and trying to escape um, this room. And then another guy going crazy under there. It's got the underwater madness. Um, Charlie having fun with the paint here. And then you can see as we go along, this is issue seven. So we're about seven months in um, that we're getting more comfortable working with each other and like her responding to my art and me sort of adjusting my art and style um, to give her space to do her thing. And so I think as we go along in the series, it's, it's subtle, but you can see that we're learning to work together. More character sketches. Um, sometimes I would work out sketches or uh, cover sketches and designs on the iPad and then just do that in, um, in paper later, but it helped me figure out color and, and uh, come up with design. Um, there we go. I got to do my National Geographic cover, which is fun. A friend of mine has that piece of art. Some of this art, I know where it is. It's kind of nice. Um, here we go. And, um, yeah, and then um, it's just fun. It was fun working with Charlene and and then working, using color to tell the story. And we, we consulted every issue. We'd go over every page and talk about it, what's happening on the page and what's going on and, and ideas for color and, and things I could do with the art. Um, this is like a action thriller issue where there's, everybody's trying to escape. There's not much time. We get to sort of the backstory of uh, Bob. He's got sort of a fun, sad backstory. I try to give everybody kind of a, little, kind of a fun little um, twist of the backstory. And then a little uh, magazine article. These are fun to design. Every issue had a little back matter like that. Uh, let's see, I think this is yeah, African gray parrot. I really would like one of these as a pet, but um, they live for like 80 years. I think I'm too old now to have one, but they are uh, one of the smartest animals on the planet. Um, more flashbacks, designing some more gadgets that are gonna be uh, featured. And so we're sort of getting Mia's memories mixed with present day uh, as they go to the sort of the engine room of this, of the deep sea base. This I based on, I'm trying to look, I think it's like car engine motors and things. I just scaled everything up and did some research on uh, what, what the motor and generator might look like in this place. So it was real fun drawing all these little um, gears and motors and things. So then here's Lily, um, another character not based, not based on uh, the Lily we really know, but I used her name. I'm terrible at naming characters. Um, so really I just pull them from real life. Uh, and then here's Q, I don't know. Oh, Q came from, he was inspired by uh, Moby Dick. Queek Egg, I think, the guy with all the tattoos. Um, so yeah, he did come from somewhere, but that was fictional. Yeah, uh, he's cool, all right. Sketch of Lily, and then uh, and then just a diagram of Q, his injuries. We're trying to the key to doing a murder mystery is that everybody has to be a, a suspect. Everybody has to have motive, and everybody has to have means. Um, but only one person did it. So I tried to set that up through the series. You know, like everybody kind of 
had a problem with the victim and they they wanted maybe wanted him dead um, this cover totally inspired by uh, La Ventura um, Criterion movie and uh, the director is escaping me right now um, but we'll put it in the notes or if you know put it in the comments and remind me again I'm terrible with names but great movie um, and then the, the mom in this uh, book was sort of inspired by the uh, character in that movie as well and I like doing diagrams and everything so it was kind of fun to sort of do some character moments with Mia as a 12 year old I think my daughter was actually that age she was maybe 12 when I was working we were working on this so maybe a little bit of inspiration from her you'll see some of her art later on too so, um, we got, kind of all got involved in this one uh, snakes fighting and then this this overview shot gosh I feel like every time I do this I always think about David Mazzuchelli in uh, Daredevil um, Born Again he started every issue with like that great um, eagle eye view looking down on Matt Murdock as he um laying in bed or laying in an alleyway i think about that every time so maybe some inspiration from that uh, again some flashbacks we're getting a lot of mia's childhood here learning about her mother um and the sound i use i repeated this this you can see this in um my book three story which is a sound i think Charlene said something about one time, or you just, you're, it's really quiet and you hear the ting of rope against a pole. I think it was a flagpole and three story in here. It's just uh, some of the rigging on the ship. Um, but it's a great sound. I like putting it in books. Uh, there she is there. And her pattern and the color on her dress is important. We repeat that in different uh, places throughout. Um, so it's her and her brother their rivalry. Um, get another overview shot, sort of mirroring the one from her earlier. And then I like this, playing this chess game in the foreground while they're fighting in the background. That was a hard, that was a hard page to figure out, but fun. Um, and then here, I think this is the first of I love my daughter's art that we put in here. I had her do all the the handwriting and then do a drawing um, as Mia, 12 years old, in her journal. I thought, why not have a real 12-year-old uh, do the, the, the art for that page? Um, again, this is another cover where we have sort of the ghost diver and then the punchline when you flip it over is that you have this creepy sort of mermaid on the back. Right, back to the story. Just trying to figure it out. There's more clues. Um, sort of doing a layout here to show like uh, the base and what's going on. I feel like that was the that was a hard part to do in this is to make sure that the space where everything's taking place is clear and who's doing what and where they were. Making sure that I didn't cheat the story with um, and gave you enough clues that you could maybe figure it out. She is diving more underwater stuff. Some of my favorite stuff to draw. Um, here we go. This is uh, sort of their base in the ocean. And then you can see there's a the um, subliminal skull here. This is probably a leftover idea from mind management. Um, but this sort of form in the skull shape up here. Kind of obvious, I guess. All right, this is a fun page to draw. It's a satellite crashing into a moon and then and then the underwater base. It's a fun page. Um, then uh, backstory, we get uh, a really old flashback. So we finally get the ghost, the ghost diver story and what happened to him. And this was actually based on a real uh, diving story when I was doing research for about diving and what it's like and um, some of what happened in here is based on a real thing that happened, which uh, really was sad, creeped me out. Not exactly like what happened here, but 
similar, inspired by. Um, here we go. Now we're getting close. So there's Henry. That's that's the uh, the dad. And just some fun back matter. And then here we go. This is the cover. Uh, which issue is this? This is issue twelve. Um, this cover I drew this in Hawaii. <laughs> Uh, we were we were there, I guess for research, um, but I remember sitting in the hotel room drawing this one because the the page was due or the cover was due and I didn't have it done yet. So you know, not a bad place to be for inspiration. Um, again, this is the cover, and then when you turn it over, then you get a little the punchline is sort of this creepy uh, dead person. Uh, all right, then. Again, sort of uh, a callback to the satellite where we're pulling back through the action out of window and then out of the sea base. Um, kind of fun to do. And then you see this, these creepy drones sort of floating around watching. All right. Some arguing, things are getting tense. And we're building up to the end of the first half of the book, so it felt like something big needed to happen. Um, it's fun writing a monthly book. When you read it all like this, you just read it as a book, but doing it monthly, you want to make sure you hit, make it interesting. Every issue has to have something in it that makes you want to read the next one. And then every, um, the books, when we split them into two like this, you want the end of the book to have something good. Maybe my, this is probably my favorite page in the whole, uh, series. Um, it's her and her brother interacting, um, and then they had a, sort of a contentious relationship the whole time. And then this last panel is just how he's making her feel. Um, to me, I think that's something that just you can't really do in any other medium. Like you could kind of do it in movies, not really. I think just that silent panel is something that only comics can do. Anyway, minor spoiler, but it's a character spoiler, not plot. Again, we're gonna we see the pattern of the mother's dress sort of repeated and that green sort of threaded throughout. Color was really important. Um, and I think working with Charlene helped me um, think about it more because she's always thinking about it and asking me and, and sort of planning it. And, and uh, I think that really helped the story. There we go. And again, like earlier in the series, I probably would have made most of this black or uh, but working with Charlene, I knew that if I just leave this, she's going to do something great with it. And so it's great. I love these edges, these watercolor edges she leaves. This really lets you see how the paint works. So they're trying to escape, they're trying to go up and get out of here. We haven't been to the, out of the water yet. So they're trying to get there. Surveillance footage. All right, another character sketch. And uh, that's it. I think uh, it kind of seemed like they're going to escape. Uh, and I think the next issue, there's a real cliffhanger. <laughs> but this is the end of book one. There's one more book that collects the second half of the series. Uh, in the back, we just have preliminary drawings. This is like the first sketches I did, trying to figure out the suit, trying to figure out the logo. I wanted something iconic. Um, this definitely is an homage to the original uh, G.I. Joe, uh, like Action Man sort of uh, logo. So I had those toys when I was a kid, so it's sort of an homage to that. Um, and I did character sketches for um, every character. I want to make them each distinct. Um, Ghost Diver, who was really fun to draw. It's just an old diving suit. Um, originally the, the big heavy diving suit had all these, um, strands coming off and that was how it would propel itself, kind of like fish do. Um, I trimmed some of that down just because I like seeing the armor more. And then the submarine purposely I tried to make it thin, almost like a fish so that underwater it would be believable that, um, it could withstand that pressure because the surface area is so vertical. Uh, it would just be less pressure on the hull. I don't know if that science is right, but um, that inspired the look of the submarine, at least. Um, there's the underwater base, which is really fun. I, the idea is that it would 
be on top, but then they would, it would burrow down into the uh, Earth's crust, so it would be underneath, maybe relieving some of that pressure of the water. Um, originally, I had more of these humanoid creatures under there. I, was, I wanted a lot of weird stuff they would find, and I scaled that back a little bit. I didn't want it to be about that so much, a little bit about that, but not uh, so much. Um, just fun drawing all these creatures and sort of taking real things and then twisting them or turning them up a notch. And then again, here's some ink tests. So early on in the book, I was doing more like this. And later on, I realized Charlie needed room to work. So I would leave things open like that. And it's cool just to see the difference uh, and feel. More tests, promotional images, just trying to figure out and get a handle on what the characters look like and sort of some of the images I wanted to show. Uh, again, just another like quick preliminary sketch. Uh, and this is the original uh, cover for issue one. Um, it kind of says in here, but I, I just didn't like it. It was done and I wasn't happy with it, but it did the thing. There's the punchline of, of she's underwater and then you flip it over. Look at all those crazy stuff. I Conceptually, I liked it, but for an issue one, um, I just didn't think it was, uh, I just didn't uh, think it was, didn't stand out enough, you know. Um, some more variant covers covered by my friend Jeff. Uh, and then another one up variant cover. This is original test. Charlene actually drew this and then painted it. She was sort of trying to figure out how her style, which she was going to do. And then in the back of this is more processed, just showing my pencils to inks and color. It's kind of cool. I think I have some videos online you can watch of those pages being drawn to. Um, but yeah, so then the original cover ended up being this. This was the cover for issue one and it's the cover for book one. Um, and I just think it has a little more impact. It stands out on the shelf a little more. All right, that's it. That is book one. If you have any questions, uh, post them in the comments. If you want to see book two, let me know. If you want to see another another book, uh, let me know that too. Um, and that's it. That's all I know about this book. <laughs>